Hi, I'm Dr. Luis de la Torre, a pediatric colorectal surgeon at the International Colorectal Center at Children's Hospital Colorado and professor of surgery at the University of Colorado. Today, I want to discuss a recent study we conducted on the histological transition zone in patients with Hirschsprung disease. Hirschsprung is a congenital condition that causes intestinal obstruction in the first days or weeks of life. The causes of Hirschsprung disease is the lack of ganglion cells in the intestine. The diagnosis is confirmed with a rectal biopsy showing the absence of ganglion cells and the presence of hypertrophic nerves. Hirschsprung affects the rectum and sigmoid in 80% of cases and more proximal colon or the entire colon in 20%. Surgical treatment involves the resection of the rectum and the proximal aganglionic bowel. Then, the surgeon performs a pull-through with the normal ganglionic intestine and creates a new rectum. Confirming the presence of ganglion cells in the intestine's proximal circumference used for the pull-through procedure is crucial. In Hirschsprung, the aganglionic bowel changed to the normal ganglionic bowel. This transformation does not occur in a sharp line separating the aganglionic from the normal ganglionic bowel, as was once believed. This transformation occurs in a segment of the intestine that is on average five centimeters long and is known as the histological transition zone. In the histological transition zone, ganglion cells gradually appear until they populate the entire circumference of the intestine. In the same way, the nerve hypertrophy disappears. During a primary pull-through procedure, a pathologist can determine the presence or absence of a transition zone by examining the proximal circumference of the intestine used for the pull-through to create the neorectum. A few years ago, a publication alerted that the bowel containing the transition zone utilized to create a neorectum was probably the cause of obstructive symptoms such as constipation and Hirschsprung associated enterocolitis. As a result, patients experiencing these symptoms were submitted to biopsies of the neorectum months or years after the pull through. In this scenario, suppose the biopsy of the neorectum reveal ganglion cells or hypertrophic nerves, which is a histological marker of the transition zone in the proximal margin during the primary pull-through. These patients underwent another resection and a redo pull-through based on the supposed diagnosis of transition zone pull-through. Recent investigations have demonstrated that after a normal ganglionic pull-through procedure, the neorectum receives new innervation from extrinsic nerves, resulting in normal reinnervation resembling hypertrophic nerves. As a result, biopsies of the neorectum are unreliable for diagnosis the, di the transition zone when ganglion cells are present along with hypertrophic nerves. In our colorectal center, we receive patients who have undergone these reoperations due to the diagnosis of transition zone pulled through based on neorectum biopsies. Unfortunately, all these patients now suffer fecal incontinence as a result. It is well known that fecal incontinence is completely preventable after a Hirschsprung pull through. However, reoperations increase the risk of fecal incontinence by almost 100%. In a study conducted at the Colorectal Center at Children's Hospital Colorado, we examined all patients with rectal sigmoid Hirschsprung who had undergone primary repair without colostomy between 2010 and 2020. We specifically analyzed the histopathological diagnosis of all the proximal margins and compared it with the functional outcome. What were our findings? Out of the 71 patients with a primary pull-through, 
six had transition zone pulled through, and 65 had a normal ganglionic pull through. When comparing these pull through types, we found that the number of patients experiencing constipation, hispron associated enterocolitis, hispron associated enterocolitis and constipation, and asymptomatic patients did not show statistically significant differences. Patients experiencing constipation or hispron associated enterocolitis received medical treatment and achieved successful outcomes. Additionally, no patient required a redupul true procedure and all had bowel control. So, in conclusion, from this original study, we can say number one, hispron associated enterocolitis and postoperative constipation can occur in patients with rectocemic hispron disease with both normal ganglionic and transition zone neorectum. Number two, given that enterocolitis and constipation are common in patients with transition zone pulled through and normal ganglionic pulled through, these obstructive symptoms may have an alternate cause. And number three, the presence of ganglion cells, both with hypertrophic nerves from the biopsy of the neorectum does not indicate a transition zone pulled through or a redo pulled through. On the contrary, the patients will most likely suffer from fecal incontinence. This has been Dr. Luis de la Torre at Children's Hospital Colorado. For more information, give us a call or visit the link on the screen. Thank you very much.